When talking about AI photo restoration, you may think of a generative model like SD, however, pure generative models are too imaginative. Photos that are directly redrawn from the SD model are often too wild. The information of the photo will be differed from the original one. The AI photo restoration model I will introduce today cleverly solved the problem. Not only can it remove blur, making the details of old photos rich and full, but also the repaired photos can maintain the same information as the original ones. This is the latest research published and open-sourced by Chinese scholars, the DIFBIR. First, a brief introduction to the model details, because this will help us understand model parameter adjustment later. Of course, you can skip this section directly. The DIFBIR model is a two-stage model. The first model is a SWIN transformer. What it completes is the basic restoration of pictures. For example, removing the noise, correct the blurry areas. The second model is the famous stable diffusion. It uses the output of the first model as condition to create image result. This used the generation ability of SD to supplement the missing information of the picture. And during the generation process, classifier guidance technology is also used to balance quality and fidelity. For example, here's a blurry photo of a woman. After the first step is done, the face is basically repaired, but it's still impossible to tell what the decorations on the forehead are. At this time, the stable diffusion models Prior knowledge and powerful ability is used to complete the most likely shape of the decoration. Next, let's enter the model installation phase. It needs to be noted in advance here. The project author very considerately provides a web version service. In other words, you can completely skip the installation process I'm going to talk about below. Go directly to the project website to try to restore your photos. When the website has a lot of visitors, there may be insufficient computing resources for you. Installation of DIFBIR is not complicated. Here I mainly demonstrate the process on Windows systems. If you are on Mac or Linux, please refer to the chapter corresponding to the project. They are more convenient than Windows system. First, create a virtual environment. Note that the Python version of the virtual environment must be selected 3.10. I will talk about the specific reasons later. After the virtual environment is created, activate virtual environment. Then you can install the project dependencies. At this time, you can first pull the project code to the local through Git. The biggest problem in installing DIFBIR on Windows systems is a package called Triton. This is a package that optimizes the computational efficiency of deep learning projects. Direct installation will report various errors. An installation method that guarantees success rate is to install it using an open source will file on Hugging Face. You can see that this will file is for version 3.10 Python. This is why Python in virtual environments uses this version. So, execute this command to successfully install Triton. Next, you can install the project's other requirements through pip. Generally, there will be no problems when installing other packages. After that, we need to download the corresponding model files. These two are common models, since it is trained on the ImageNet dataset. So you can repair any type of pictures, the following two models are specifically designed for facial photo restoration. It is trained on the specialized face dataset FFHQ, since the web UI provided by the project is for common model. So we first download these two models for explanation. If you want to use a specialized face model, you need to run by a script. After the model is downloaded, create a new folder in the project directory named wait, and paste the downloaded model file into it. Then you can start the project with this command. Notice. It is best for your computer to have an NVIDIA GPU with at least 6G of memory. Otherwise, it should be changed to run on the CPU. The project provides a UI similar to Stable Diffusion. You just need to copy this link and open it in your browser. After the page starts, you can see where the photos to be repaired should be uploaded. For example, let's first upload a blurry face photo. The Disable Preprocess Model parameter here indicates whether to use the basic preprocess model. That is the first stage SWIN transformer model. The default is to use. If the option is checked, it means not using first stage model and use the stable diffusion model directly to restore pictures on blurry photos. As we talked about it before, doing so will result in results that diverge from the original photo information. The effect is not good. So for this option, we usually just uncheck the box. The use color correction parameter here represents at the end of the model calculation 
Whether to use color correction algorithm, color correction can ensure that the images generated by diffusion model sampling are of the same color distribution corresponds to the original image. So for this option, we usually check it by default. After setting these two parameters, we can click run first to try the repair process. Then the face that is unrecognizable can be seen. It has been clearly repaired. Next, let's talk about the seed parameter here. It stands for random seed. When fixed to a specific value, it will result in same photos each time. When it is set as different values, you can get different results. You can use it to gain diversity. Step parameter represents the number of sampling steps. DIFBIR uses an accelerated, res-pace sample method of diffusion model sampling. The disadvantage is that it will sacrifice a little bit of generation quality. The original stable diffusion model, use 1000 as the number of sampling steps. The step parameter here is when generating the image. To what extent is the number of sampling steps reduced? The smaller the value, the faster the generation process. But the quality effect is often worse. The larger the value, the slower the generation speed. But details are often better. It can be seen that, when step is set to 100, person's face is, not only restored, but even added some, skin details such as freckles, positive prompt and negative prompt parameters, represents the prompt words. When generating missing information using SD, I believe that if you have played stable diffusion, you should know what these mean. Here at positive prompt, you can fill in the basic content of this picture, include the elements you want to generate. Here at negative prompt, normally just fill in what you just don't expect to be generated. It is worth mentioning that the DIFBIR model is essentially an image generation model conditioned on image. That is, the factors that controls the generation result are not only texts, but also the original image input. So the control effect of text prompt is not as obvious as the simple generation model conditioned only on texts. So for these two prompts, you do not need much time to adjust. There's not much impact on the final result. Troll strength represents degree of influence that original picture will have on the final generated image. As said before, DIFBIR is a generation model conditioned mainly on the original picture input. So when this parameter is set very high, the impact of the original image on the final image will be very big since the original image is blurry. So in this case, it may cause the generated image to be blurry too. When the parameter is set lower, the original image has less impact on the final result. In extreme cases, if set to zero, what happens is that the generated image and the original image are not related anymore, so, it is generally better to set this parameter to around 1. Unless you want to make some results that character is in a landscape painting, number of sample parameter represents how many pictures are generated each time. If your computing resources are sufficient, you can set it larger so, you can produce multiple repair results at once. To choose from, SAR, scale parameter, represents whether to scale the input image size. If you want the generated image size to be, higher than your original image. You can set it larger here. How parameter represents whether to cut the picture into multiple pieces to be processed separately. And below are the specific cutting size. If your picture is not the kind that contains a lot of information, for example, just a simple portrait photo, I don't recommend cutting it up. Process the original image directly will be better. Classifier guidance parameter represents whether or not use the classifiers. Guidance in the sampling process if it is modified, it will affect the sampling process, changing the mean of the Gaussian distribution to generate offset. So if modified, it may change the sampling results to some very different results. But it is also very likely that the results will be strange. If you don't have relevant knowledge, it is not recommended to adjust. Of course you can also try it to see what unexpected and interesting results happen. The above is all contents of DIFBIR I can share to you. I think this is a very interesting AI project that can make old photos that are valuable to us alive again. It will bring back our good memories. Of course old photo restoration not only has emotional significance, but also some very practical use cases. For example, this guy just used AI models to restore the damaged information in ancient stone tablets. Inspired by him, I also found a broken mural picture from Mogao Grottoes in Dunhuang. In China, I tried it with DIFBIR and found that it can indeed be repaired in some degree. More fun applications with DIFBIR.
will be left to you to explore. Alright, that's all the content. For this video, if you like, don't forget to follow the channel. I'm Metal. See you next time.